today we are talking about how to succeed still in times of uncertainty or in these uncertain times. This is very important because with all that's going on in our world today, uh, facing this pandemic, um, a lot of financial crisis, health crisis combined together, a lot of panic, stress, depression, discouragement, the whole nine. Um, many people are still wondering if they can succeed, but I want to let you know that definitely you can succeed. It seems like you know basically everyone always have plans for the new year right everybody said their new year 2020 resolutions and it was you know the year of vision vision this vision that 2020 we're going to do this we're going to achieve this and um, right now it seems as though 2020 has taken a beating out of many people it has actually you know like stolen many people's dreams and dashed many people's hope so many people now are even just looking forward to 2021 already. So what can we do to offer some encouragement tonight is what, what, why we are here. I just want to give you, I'm going to give you four tips, four strategies. Welcome, Melissa. Four strategies on how you can be able to still succeed and thrive even in the midst of uncertainty. Now, of course, this applies to the current uncertainty that we had, but this is anything in your life. You know, you might one day get a diagnosis, you might one day face bankruptcy, you know, whatever may be going on, those are always uncertain times. What are we gonna do to proceed forward? So it doesn't matter what the uncertainty is, but I want to give you these tips and strategies that I believe will help you. And again, there are just four that I'm gonna cover on this evening. So let me get back to the slide here. So again, uh, for those of you who may be new, if you're not part of my community uh, or weekly, this is the weekly Thursday um, Community for Strategic Secrets. My name is Chance, U.S. Navy veteran, number one best-selling author, speaker, and minister. I'm able to travel around many parts of the world, six different continents, 26 different countries. Uh, we able to help share people, share with people different ideas and approaches, not only on a spiritual level, that's our main main thing as uh, missionaries and a minister, but we also teach people, again, the nuts and bolts of succeeding in any area of your life, be it academic career, be it financial, be it physical and mental, emotional, because those are just as important um, to, to our life. And most of the times these areas get overlooked. Uh, because many times we don't know how to apply even spiritual principles to, let's say, our career. But it's all the same, especially the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes has so many um, success principles uh, embedded in them. Also, the book of Deuteronomy and Exodus, well, the Pentateuch, really, uh, those books right there contain everything that we really need to flourish in this life, not just get by, but to flourish. So I that's really where I've been focusing on the last, uh, I would say since 2016 in particular, though I've been doing it off and on before then, but with, with this book, Monetize Your Skills, I wrote that in 2016. And from there, that's where I get the idea from God to be able to just, you know, spend a little more focus on that and give people um, some of these tips as well. And of course, they're all um, spiritually based, and so I think no matter how we look at it, God is the author of all success either way. Okay, so, but there's no doubt that we are living right now in trying times. Everyone is facing a trying time. I mean, if, as long as you're on the earth, we know that the whole world right now is facing a global pandemic with the coronavirus. It has created a, uh, a wave of other things um, behind it, including an economic crisis, many um, job layoff, financial hardship for businesses, and everyone is being affected. Life is pretty much uh, is not the same, even though, um, for example, even uh, places of worship, people cannot get together uh, physically as they need to, and that itself, because we need a social contact, but that itself has really altered life in a dramatic way, and some are responding okay with it, uh, but others are having a very, very difficult time. And so we are all in this together. And this is why this presentation this evening is also to give some positivity and some perspective on how we can look at any form of crisis that we find ourselves in. So again, so far, it seems as though 2020 has dashed many people's hope. It has 
toll in the resiliency. Many people have lost their resiliency and buoyancy and confidence um, amidst the particular crisis at the moment. And that's how life will be at times, right? We all gonna go through, some people call it the dark night of the soul. Sometimes you're gonna feel um, you know, so overwhelmed that it's like you don't really know how you're gonna make it tomorrow. I think at some point, everyone is gonna face that as, as we mature through this life, we will all go through some type of a hardship. But it's good to remember who we are and whose we are in a time of hardship but also remember that life keeps going anyhow. So if you allow life to beat you down, you know, it's not gonna stop anyhow. Tomorrow is gonna be here with or without you. So we might as well find ways to bounce back. And that's what resilience is all about, the ability to be able to get up again. And scripture puts it the same way. The, you know, the righteous falls down seven times, but gets back up again. That right there is a picture of resiliency, okay? So that's why we have to be balanced in all things and in all areas of your, our lives. Balance is very, very important. Okay, so let me get into the meat of it here. So what are we going to discover tonight? Our presentation is going to answer by the time this presentation is finished and I give you these four strategies, we will be able to discover these things, how to maximize our time and impact while we are on this lockdown, how to protect our mental and emotional well-being during this season, and how to be able to prepare ourselves to come out winning big time when the crisis is over or when the lockdown is lifted. You want to be able to maximize right now what is going on because, again, you can always look at things in a positive way. For one right now, Look at how amazing this is. We've never had a time, as far as I've been um, alive here, and um, well, I, I guess at least in the past 20 years, I would say, we've never had a moment where we were confined to our homes, where we had all the time, where, we were, where there's no distraction of um, sports, entertainment, stuff outside, even church, as good as religion is and faith practices, but we've never had a time where we just had to be home. And so now that's the problem is that many of us don't even know what to do with ourselves because we have so much time to ourselves, right? So, but I want us to realize that this is a blessing in disguise, not the crisis itself, but I'm saying the opportunity to have time, you know, and, and, and a lot of dis distractions removed, right? Now is the time and many people are feeling it, unfortunately, with stuff that doesn't matter. So let's talk about it again. How can we still succeed in these uncertain times? Number one, I want you to be proactive, right? The word proactive means to create or control a situation by causing something to happen rather than responding after it happens. This is the problem of many of our people where, again, this is also, I mean, we say this in so many different ways, right? The other day we did um, a presentation about responding and planning and, and uh, preparing for pandemics and pestilences and perils. And again, one of the, the, the passages from the wise King Solomon in Proverbs says, the wise foresee the danger and the evil, and they make plans in preparation. Well, being proactive is like that. It is easier to avert danger when you have the information beforehand and do something about it, rather than while you are in the crisis, trying to adjust yourself. But either way, that's what we say, life still has to go on. But being proactive means, now that I know that there is a crisis, now that I see what's going on, how can I do things before they happen rather than reacting after they happen? Because the reaction normally is one of panic, one of fear, one of guilt, and all of these different things. That's why before the crisis hits, it's always good to have been making plans and preparation. Another consideration, especially for people of faith, is this. Look, God is still in control, but what if he's given his children also, in the midst of all of this, an opportunity to really and truly contemplate, well, we're gonna talk about that actually next, but to really have time to nurture a relationship with him, right? Some people's probation may be on the line. This is an opportunity right now 
That's what we're saying. You can always look at the crisis or you can look at the opportunity. It's good to find the crisis and the silver lining within. So here are some things that we can be proactive. One is practice self-care and safety, right? During this time is not, a, you know, the time to let yourself go down. I, I guarantee you this. Many people are going to come out of this thing with a whole lot of weight, overweight, okay? Extra weight because they're not doing anything. Um, this is the time to watch what you eat, how you eat, and when you eat, right? Because now you don't have to go to work and all these things. So some people might be up, you know, late at night, eating, 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 uh, all to, to feed the depression and discouragement because they seem like there's nothing to do, right? When people are bored and they eat. So you have to be careful. You have to practice good self-care, meaning self-care means take care of yourself. You know, don't let yourself just go down. Take care of yourself still. Now, this is a, it is indeed a time to let your hair down, as it were. Yes, okay, that's fine. But you don't want to get so comfortable as well, you know, carrying yourself around raggedy or, or stuff like that, right? <laughs> I don't know um, if you guys get my gif with that. But you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we get so lax because, okay, well, I'm not going out. No one is seeing me. So maybe in the morning you, you're unkept. You are not, uh, you know, keeping up your appearance. You should still do those things because you want to stay, especially for, again, our Thursday crew are mainly professionals, entrepreneurs, ministry leaders, right? So as a professional, you have to maintain um, your mindset and peak performance at all times, okay? So I want you to practice that and safety too. Again, we, we you know, there are many facets of this thing where people, uh, you know, are not uh, practicing safe guidelines. Listen. I know it's it's not easy. Like I said, we need, we crave social contact and relationships, but you have to do your part, like stay safe. Uh, um, even right now, the whole entire county where we live, you know, they have put out a, a stay at home order and there's no need to go and put yourself in harm's way unnecessarily. So that's practicing um, safety, you know, um, even if you're healthy, as they are saying, you know, because why, if you're healthy, don't put yourself in an unhealth, unhealthy or unhealthful condition, you know, to be able to contract uh, this particular thing. Now, again, it, it doesn't mean we are hiding. It just means we are practicing common sense. So let's just be uh, proactive in that way because we want to be well. You don't, the last thing you want is now the curve is being, um, you know, is flattened or after the, the, the band is lifted, but now you are trying to recover your health you know, at the end of it. So it's better to do that. Now, exercise. Exercise is very important. Um, again, it, even though we might be confined indoors, it is important for us to get outside, get some sunshine and get some recreation. Okay. So that was my thing this morning after uh, breakfast. Um, even I even took my, my journal outside and, and uh, have a little uh, reading outside. And then right afterwards, um, you know, I was playing with my son and we were walking around the yard and, and just running around in the backyard. So these are little things that you, you want to be able to do to stay physically fit. Also, we learned that, you know, um, sunshine is good for, for dealing with this crisis as it is right now. So just balance everything out. So get enough rest. Like don't stay up late unnecessarily if you don't have to just because you're not going to work tomorrow like, you know, staying up late, this might be the best time to reacclimate your body towards um, consistent routine and sleeping and waking. So this is a, probably a good reset, you know, because again, um, as, as life is so busy, we, we don't, you know, we, it's hard sometimes for us to even practice self-care. But now that it is a controlled environment, pretty much is a good time to get back into that routine of being able to sleep on time and wake on time, you know, like consistency, um, that this might be a great opportunity for that. Next thing is mental and emotional cleansing. Oh, this is a perfect time to do that. Get rid of all those baggage. That's what I'm saying is take opportunity and advantage, um, you know, to, to get rid of a lot of things. If you've been um, dealing with a lot of stress, a lot of drama in your life, now is a good time to cleanse yourself of all of that. You know what I mean? Shed all of those type of stuff, you know, and forgive yourself, forgive other people, get rid of bitterness, you know, whatever is going on, but unclog your mind as well. All the junk that's been piling up over the years where we just keep going and going, now is a good time to, you know, pull back and take care of that. So number two, 
okay we need to be reflective so the first step we're going to be re i mean proactive but now we need to be reflective right this is characterized by deep thought it also means to be contemplative meditative and thoughtful so this is a good time for us to really and truly think because again when you are busy when life is so busy we let ourselves go and so you have to now take opportunity as the time that you have right now right to reflect you want to be able to think to pray to meditate you want to be able to get clear on your dreams right get clear on your goals this might be a change a season you know when we talk about the Kondratiev wave we see that right now is the the world is going into a, another phase at this moment you might have to now reconsider your life your dreams your goals what's important what's the next step when we come out of this thing life is not going to just go back to normal overnight it may never go back to normal as a matter of fact because there is a lot of changes that are taking place changes in healthcare changes in our economy changes in the way we work and study now everybody is again being confined and then people get adjusted they get used to online learning online this online that it's not probably going to go back to the same so now is the time for you to revisit your goals and dreams perhaps we're talking about still succeeding in 2020 well maybe it's time to refine your dreams so you want to pull out your journal and journal your thoughts and ideas right this is um one of my journal actually even um today okay so I even 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 before getting on this thing this morning I was journaling I don't know if you can see some of the, the writing here but I was journaling for this webinar right I was putting down some things here how to um, still succeed in uncertainty and I was just writing down a whole bunch of ideas uh, on this as well journaling and writing helps me it may be helpful to you as well here's another journal I have called the vision journal that's my devotional journal but then um, last night I was um, journaling yesterday I was journaling and I was also watching some online webinars learning some things and taking notes in my journal right here okay so I would say one two three all right four about four well, about six pages I even have a prayer right here right Wednesday March the 25th 2020 here's a prayer that I that I wrote out there. So again, journaling, this is a time to stay inspired, right? And keep your interest. So you have to go back and write. This is a good way to, to think, and it helps with your mental uh, and emotional states as well. So that's another reason I highly recommend that you journal and that you write things down. But if you're gonna achieve your goals, you have to go back and look at your goals. In the beginning of my journal here, this same journal, I have again, look, my goals for 2020, my goals for right here. All my key goals for 2020 are written right here. Then I have uh, first quarter goals, January, February, March, okay? Another page over here. I have my, my way of achieving them, but here second quarter is coming up next week. Next week, this first quarter is done after, um, you know, I think, well, Monday, Tuesday. So Wednesday is the 1st of April. That's the beginning of the second quarter. So you want to be able to, you want to be able to go back and start writing down your dreams and goals because obviously because of the setback that we have faced temporarily and things have changed, now we are confined to home. Many of us cannot be able to work on some of the goals. So you have to now go back and say, reshuffle, maybe undo some of them. They might not be important anymore. So why why, why keep them as goal? You know, the fact that you write the goal means that you can also unwrite it or rewrite it, okay? So if it's no longer an important goal, you have to adjust it or because we have lost time, you have to make up for the time. So you have to go back and re-strategize all over again. And then I have my third quarter and fourth quarter goals. It all, it's all written down. So now that you know, this is not like, again, we don't try to do things haphazardly. We do things in an organized fashion. You may not see it, but then you see the outcome. Chance, how come you're writing and publishing so many books? How come you're able to produce courses and do these things? Well. It's because I, am, I, I, I write things down, I get organized, and I spend time thinking before my mind gets overtaken with a whole lot of stuff. 
So whenever works for you, if it's nighttime, early morning, whatever, I know you got to find the things that keep you inspired. What keeps me inspired? I like listening to uplifting music, motivational and inspirational things. And um, I, and I take long showers because I do get my, my best ideas in the showers and, and at night. So I know that those are my like genius zone. So you got to think about it. When are you at your best? When do you create? And when do things come to you? So again, for some people, it's in the early morning, some people in the midday, whenever that, that is. But use this time to study yourself and kind of know who you are, how you operate. So again, uh, that's why I also like keeping the journals, right? I put them all over the place because when I get an idea, I want to go and write it down because you might not um, need it right now, but it will come back to you again. Case in point, case in point, okay? Um, I'm getting ready to, to create an online course and Again, this is a journal from way back in the day, but I've been reading it and studying it um, over uh, because now I'm trying to decide how I'm going to pull out some of this content. But here's one of the, the journal entries and the, the notes that I have were from 2011, right? That's almost what, yeah, February 27, 2011. That's nine years ago. Yeah, nine years ago, okay? So now I'm looking at all of this, I'm like, Okay, how can I now take this content that I create? This is many pages, by the way. And how can I put it in a, a structured way? Because those, again, those are just journaling my ideas. But again, if you don't capture the ideas and the vision that God gave you, then you, will not, you might not be using them now. That's not the point. But maybe in the future, they might be of value. So now they are instructive because actually those, um, those notes from, from 2011 were about because we were about also coming up on the 2012 crisis so these were notes that were dealing with how to deal with preparedness and crisis situations and you see it comes in handy even today so that's the kind of stuff that i'm talking about anyhow let's go on to the third one uh, does that make sense folks does that make sense to you give me a year or nay there let me type in here does that make sense right? What works best for you? When, when are you the most creative? Okay. Let me, let me hear from some of you. When are you most creative? What is your most creative time? Barbara says, yes. Uh, Josie said, yes. Okay. When do you find you have ideas? Uh, Leroy said, yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Now, when do you, when is your creative time? When do you, when do you feel most inspired? Okay, everybody, like I said, everyone is different. I, okay, 6 p.m., okay, in the evening time, okay, good. Awesome, so Leroy, Leroy's most creative time is in the evening. Josie's is in the morning, good. So we have different time, right? So that's what you wanna maximize. Now you must protect that particular time so you're not rushing into your evening nor stressed in the evening. For those of you, if it's, if it's in the morning like, Le, uh, like, uh, like Josie, you want to protect that time. So you have to guard your morning hours in such a way that you make that, as it were, the genius zone, right? So for me, like I said, I like to take long showers so I can think, I can, you know, all my ideas, they come and I just kind of run these scenarios over and over in my mind until things get clear. Then sometime I get out and then I go right because I've thought about them and then now I'm able to, to, to get it done going. So, you know, the spurs come differently. Uh, for me, it's not necessarily a morning or an evening thing. Um, though mornings are better because it's more quiet. I, I don't like to work in noise. But at the same time, like I said, whenever I do take a shower, I do find that to me is when my you know zone of genius uh, kicks in the most. So I like to capitalize that. So whether it's in the morning, afternoon, I just know that, okay, take a long shower and that will help you to uh, to to think clearly and even solve some of my problems too. Whenever I have problems or trying to solve a very um, challenging situation, I just go and I think. Sometimes I go um, in the bathroom, then I put in my, uh, my my music as well or some inspirational stuff, and I listen it. And all of those kind of things are helpful. Okay, um, Selvin Duncan, Elder Duncan says yes, very very early in the morning. Amen. Yeah, right, and that's good because now you can also worship and get insight from God. I think that's a, that's an awesome, awesome opportunity. But again, this is what professional and successful people do. The, you know, the Warren Buffetts of the world, the the whoever you consider to be successful in the world, they all have 
a time of the day that they are in a genius zone as it were and sometimes they can get in two hours done what it will take some people six hours to do so that's why whenever you are in that zone the same thing for me with writing i know a lot of people struggle writing i said listen what you want to do is write in the time when you are most inspired so when i get an inspiration i can go for hours because I, I, it just flows but i'm not going to try to write when you know when i'm not really motivated or inspired in that way where so that way i'm struggling struggling no i wait and when the inspiration comes i go man and i just keep writing writing and then voila i come up with a whole lot of content and then i can go sift it out later on okay so good thank you for the feedback there let's continue now we're going to go to number three number three is be productive so again number one is be proactive take action early number two practice self-care as well and then number two is be reflective be uh, contemplative um, in the sense of you know you because the, the bible talks about that right jesus himself woke up early that was his zone of genius he got up early in the morning he went to communicate no no um, noise no distraction and so he was able to receive divine guidance and inspiration um, when i look at um uh, like david you know, David seemed to be different times of the day. But in Psalm chapter one, he talks about he meditates on the love of God day and night. So it seems like in the morning and in the evening were his zones of genius and he received divine insights um, during the morning and evening hours. So, uh, you know, and even said, you know, morning at noon and at night is a good time to pray. So those are time when you can be quiet because it says be still and know that i am the lord we're not talking about doing crazy mantras that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about the bible does mention meditation meditation is contemplating on the word of god and on god himself that's the difference between new age kind of thinking and you know and and faith-based way of going it's on who and on what you're meditating but meditation is definitely biblical um Psalm 119, David talks about he has more wisdom than even all of his teachers and the ancient because he meditates on the words of God. So there's meditation over and over and over. Matter of fact, in my journal here, in this devotional journal that I created in December, I talk about, I spent a whole entire chapter on biblical meditation and a lot of scriptures that goes along with it, okay? So let's see what else here now. So let's go to number three, be productive, be productive. Being productive means to be able to produce a large amount or quantity of something, whether that be goods or crops or whatever. In other words, be fertile and be fruitful. This is what um, the, the first instruction to human beings were in the garden, right? God told them, be fruitful and multiply. He says, be productive, produce. So in other words, that's why we must take this time, this opportunity that God has given us, when we are sequestered away, when we don't have to worry about even being out there because, hey, the whole land is telling us we can rest. So in this moment, I'm saying, if they're telling you, you can rest, you don't have to now feel guilty about not going out to work, but nonetheless, we still need to be productive. It is not a call for laziness. So that's why they say, even with the kids, you might be at home from school, but you need to do school and online. You might be not working physically, at the job but they say hey do things online so in other words you must still be producing but how can we take this time to be able to be productive now here's some examples again establish a daily routine and a schedule even though you may have the time where you're not rushed to be anywhere you still need to practice a time schedule meaning you wake up at a certain time, you eat at a certain time, you do lunch at a certain time, you take a nap or rest at a certain time, whatever it may be. Follow the same schedule that you have had when you were working because when those are when those who are working are ready to go back out to the workplace, if you allow yourself to get into a slump, it's going to be hard readjusting. So you want to keep a, 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 a schedule. Now, instead of um, binging on watching Netflix and every movie that is out there, and again, you know, get your entertainment if you can, but do not make it the main thing and you are wasting time. That's what a lot of people are doing. They're watching movie after movie and sitcom after sitcom, and all they do all day long is watch stuff. That is being passive about life, and that is wasting time and wasting energy. You want to binge watch if you, I mean, if you're going to do something, then binge learn. 
binge read, binge study. Use the time to develop yourself professionally and personally, right? This is personal development and professional development. Now is a good time to take a, a course. Now is a good time to learn a new skill. Read a book, right? Finish a book. Listen to an entire audio book. I just started one this afternoon. Uh, about two hours ago, I just started a new book, right? But I've already completed several books this year already. So that's keeping your mind sharp and being alert, right? You have to keep learning. It's called lifelong learning. You cannot be successful in any epidemic, in any on times of uncertainty, if you are not consistently learning. And that's why many people don't have strategies to be able to weather storms because their minds are not up to par. You want to keep learning. You want to keep growing. So now would be a good time to learn a new skill. Now would also be a good time to learn how to use technology for those who have not been into the technology, but now we are being forced into it where pretty much you have to use it. So now would be a good time to learn how to, you know, do a video, or audio, whatever it may, may be, learn to use your phone, learn to use certain apps and different things like that. So go ahead and learn a new um, thing. So learn a new skill, okay? Learn a new skill. I just um, downloaded a um, couple of apps. I downloaded some apps from the VA the other day um, about, let's see here. One is called Move Coach, right? Because I do, I tell you, I, I need to work more even on that myself, right? And then I have a CBT, was it Coach? So this one is uh, optimizing your sleep. Then I downloaded another thing called the Podomo uh, Timer. This is, a, this is a management tool that helps you to be focused on one thing at a time so you can limit your uh, multitasking, okay? So these are new apps that I just downloaded from my phones. Um, most of them were free, but the one, the um, Pomodoro, that was a paid app. So even that I'm investing in myself. It wasn't expensive anyhow. Um, so different things like that. You just learn different stuff. That helps you to grow and it keeps your mind sharp as well. So this is also a good time to organize your life, organize your bills, organize your room, your office, whatever it may be. Clean your house, do some repairs. Today, my, my son and I were out in the back hammering up some things. Um, you know, not too long ago, we had the, um, uh, the wind when it, you know, when it was some high winds and, you know, the, the fence was kind of leaning. And I was debating. I don't know if my neighbor, it was my neighbor's responsibility or mine's. I don't know how these fans work, you know, in these parts here. So we just kind of rigged it up, was kind of tracking it up for a while. But then again, after we played today, I said, you know what? I'm just going to go nail up this stuff because, well, I guess my neighbor probably, I don't know, maybe he was waiting on me to do it. So, hey, you know what? I just went and, and nailed it up. And, hey, we got something done. That was a necessary repair, right? So that's what we are saying is, you want to maximize the time. So now, if your house is, is being needed some work and you haven't had the time because you are busy at the job or at the business, guess what? Now is a good time to use the opportunity to get them done before you go back out to work, okay? So do all of those things. Another one is maybe some of you need to consider this as an opportunity to pivot or to shift right? There are always paradigm shifts that are taking place. A paradigm shift is pretty much a disruption of the status quo or what was or what is. For example, um, Airbnb disrupted the hotel business, right? Uh, what's the other one? Lyft and, and Uber disrupted the taxi business, right? So that means people had to now what? Shift. Shopping and so forth were disrupted by Amazon. And so you might have to consider now how do you need to pivot in light of what's going on? In light of all these things, you might, that's why I say take time to learn a new skill. It doesn't necessarily mean you might have to go back to, um, to, to, to school per se, but if that's what it's call, it calls for, then do it. But you might just have to take a, a, an online course to learn some basic skill in digital technology, online marketing, all of these things, because that is the wave of the future. And as again, the prediction and the analysis out there right now is that when this cycle is over, if the Lord doesn't come, we are going into now another era and it's going to be the age of either biotechnology or a combination of biotech and artificial intelligence. So now might be a good time to say, okay, what industries can I 
go into should my job be phased out as we go into this new era. So that's why we're saying is for people to thrive, you have to keep growing. Some people wait until they're squeezed out of a job in order to find another one. No, it's best to equip yourself before you lose your job or before your industry dies so you can pivot easily into another industry. So some of the, the industries out there, healthcare and allied health will always be around. That's a booming industry. So anything that has to do with health, healthcare is good to go in. And there's so many different ways. It's not only, you know, being a doctor, nurse or something like that, but there are so many different things, biotech that are, are related. Hosp even hospital um, administrators make six figures as well. People may not even be aware of that, but these are some things that you can do to start phasing in. I, I have several friends of mine, including my own, uh, my sister-in-law, uh, you know, I have a good friend of mine who comes down here in the, in, into the valley from uh, San Antonio, and he is going into nurse practitioner, but dealing with psychiatric. So uh, all of these people, even in the healthcare, they are retooling themselves so they can also pivot again. Uh, and his wife, a uh, good friend of ours as well, she's going into technology. She's a nurse, but she's going into like nurse tech. So that is something where she's pivoting in her career as well. So that's the kind of stuff that we want you to be able to do now, for example, with all the technology now that is here before us, imagine if young people would learn how to do live streaming and know how to use videos. One church not too long ago, even within our denomination, they just hired a, a pastor to be over media. Now imagine that. So if you're a young person and you just love media, you had a job very easy and you're still a pastor. So that's what kind of stuff that we're talking about is being able to say, based on what's going on, Lord, how can I pivot and change? That's being productive, okay? And last one, last one, be creative. Be creative, which is similar to being productive, but you wanna be creative. This involves the imagination or use of original ideas, especially in the production of an artistic work or bringing something to life, right? This is about innovation and being ingenious. That's why I started out with knowing your zone of genius. So being creative, here's some things you can do. Make something, do something. Right now, for example, I see some, I saw some ladies making masks. I think my wife is making some as well. That's, that's creating something. So that's using the time wisely, right? Remember now you're creating the days of your youth. Like utilize your time, Psalm 90, 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Use the time wisely. Build something, create something, make anything. If you're in business or ministry, write a new strategy or system or protocol of doing things and accomplishing something. For example, right now, I see all of the churches, for example, are putting in the new strategy for um, incorporating digi digital technology. Today, I'm in a pastor's uh, Facebook group, and what uh, you know, they're asking about what about automated uh, phone systems? What which which system do you use? Which one do you recommend? Different things like that. So that's what we're talking about. Based on what's going on now, plan for when we are able to get out of this thing. How can we already position ourselves? Because that will be another reactive thing if we get out of this and we go back to business as usual. Things have changed and it will drastically keep changing. It is time for us to learn. This is the age of rapid change and transformation. So we must stay ahead, okay? And so this is what I'm saying is what system can you create to be able to now up level and achieve greatly in the different area of your life, right? So you wanna have basic systems and strategies. In the beginning of the year, when I talked about visionary, I gave you ideas on how to come up with systems and protocols. So for example, in your health, um, those of us who, who are here, who uh, like Adventist folks, New Start is, for example, a system and a strategy for health. Finances, Financial Peace University is a system and a strategy, right? Dave uh, Don Daniels, Pill Method, is another system and a strategy for managing your finances. So that's what I'm saying. If you create a protocol like that for marriage, I'm writing a book about that, right? The trust method, right? You know, using that acronym trust, that's the method, that's the strategy and a system, a protocol to be able to now improve your relationships. So all of these are different things. In your faith, it is very simple. The sanctuary itself is a system and a process, right? If you would read the Bible, read the word of God on a daily basis, if you would pray consistently and share your faith, that's a system for growing spiritually. 
Those are the kind of things you want to think about. That's why I said for me, journaling is part of my strategy. That's why, again, last year I created these just for myself to be able to use. Now, of course, other people benefit from them, but this is my devotional journal, right, that I created, that God gave me the wisdom to sit down and create it. And then uh, a regular journal, we call it the vision journal because we're going into 2020. So the vision journal captures, um, this one is mainly faith-based stuff, but this one captures everything else. Right. So whatever other idea I have about life, about success, about um, doing things online, books, ideas, all of these things. This is where I try to write those type of things. So you might want to write a book. OK, if you if you've been putting off writing a book, now might be a good time to write a book, uh, publish some poems, uh, create an online course. Right. You know, it's not hard to do these things nowadays, but bring something to life is the idea. We are created in the image of God. What does that mean? God is the creator. We are his creation. And therefore, God has empowered us to be able to create like him. That's what you talk about being fruitful and multiply. It's not only in the creation of offspring, but that itself is a creative process. So God allowed mankind to be able to produce. Think about it. Every car out there has been birthed in the imagination of something. This mic right here is someone's imagination and creation. Okay. This glass that I have right here is someone's creation. The phone that you use is someone's creation. Why can't we take time to sit down and come up with an idea for something and create something that will be of a blessing to someone else? It can be simple as whatever you are good at, write it down and then make something out of that. Gardening, it doesn't matter, just create something. This will be a wonderful use of time. So my friend, after this breeze, breeze is over, when this is all done, will you be able to have something to show for it? Can you say, but, praise God, all the time that I had during the lockdown, this is what I created by God's grace. And here it is. I was able to make a book. I was able to make some whatever, learn how to cook. I was able to bring this recipe to life, whatever it may be. I know for me, I've already, like I said, I've already gotten ideas uh, for creating a new course. And so you know, I'm still trying to flesh out the, the, the topic. I went for a long walk the other day, um, but it's still not fully there yet. But the, the content is already there, like I said, and they've been written a while ago. So now I'm trying to see how we can piece them all together. So hopefully that can be done before the week. And by next week, I can just record them and have them up online, hopefully by the following week. So I'm going to take at least two weeks, challenge myself to do that in two weeks. And if I'm able to do that before this quarantine thing is over, then that'll be good. So at the end of it, I know, hey, I have created something that may hopefully be a blessing to several people. So that's it. What are the four things, therefore, that we can do to thrive in any time of uncertainty? One is be proactive. Plan before, move before, do something. Don't just wait and sit around. Next is be reflective. Know yourself. Know your zone of genius. Get rid of baggage and mental and emotional things that are, um, you know, holding you back. You know, spend some time writing and updating your goals, your dreams, your visions for life. Uh, number three is you want to be productive, right? Utilize the time to grow, to be able to, you know, read more, study more, um, you know, do some necessary things around your homes, your office, your business, whatever it is, be whatever it may be. Um, pivot if you have to, meaning that move with the times and don't wait for the times to move on you. You move with it, and even ahead of the curve uh, will be better. And lastly, be creative, create something. We are supposed to be creating. Many of us are only consuming stuff, but we have to be creators as well. Why don't we create something for someone else to be able to? Um, um, to be able to, you know, grow themselves. So if we are always consuming, say, God, give me an idea that I can create something that others can consume, right? How about that? And that's a prayer. I've even written down a prayer like that uh, the other day, you know, and it was very simple. I think it was like uh, just two or three lines. God, give me an idea to be able to do X, Y, and Z to solve this particular problem. And that was my simple prayer. God, give me an idea to be able to solve X, Y, and Z problem. And that was it. There was, it wasn't a big prayer. It was just a simple few lines and that was it. But I believe that God can give us wisdom and idea because he is God. Okay. 
So any questions here? Any questions? We're going to take uh, about five minutes for Q&A. And then um, that's pretty much it. But I would like to show a video for those of you who want to um, remain. There is something that I want to um, share with you as a member of our community. Um, I want to, uh, I, I think one of the challenges that people have is, again, content, content, content. And they always have to be searching. Well, I think I have a solution for that. I want to be able to give you an all-in-one solution to be able to get books courses, video trainings, all of that from us without ever having to worry about, you know, having to buy every single thing from us. Just being a part of our team will allow you to, to do so. So um, any feedback at all? Anybody would like to share anything? What are some uh, of your thoughts and ideas? Uh, maybe if you give me some ideas, I can update this training and, and share the next time I share with others. So what are some tips that you may have of yourself to be able to help people to thrive in the midst of uncertainty? What are some of the advice that you may give or some questions that you may have about thriving in this situation that we are in or just in general um, times of uncertainties? Anyone? I'll leave it open right here. How can you find a niche and grow? Okay, uh, Leroy, uh, one of the ways to find a niche is this. You ask yourself a question. Who has what problem that I can solve? Okay, because all of life is revolved around solving problems. This glass is solving a problem. This mic is solving a problem. Like your creation ought to be something that solves a problem. So you can ask yourself, what problem that I believe that I can solve or what problem are people having that they need a solution for? When you say niche, I assume you might be in business. So if it's for a business product, then you have to ask, not only is it a problem that people have, but are they willing to pay to solve that problem? Like, are they desperate to solve it? So that's why health, for example, is always a good niche because people want to take care of their health and they're spending a lot of money on health. Actually, the healthcare in the United States is the largest industry, right? It's a couple trillion dollars industry. So that's why there's always something about this diet, that diet, and so forth. So I will give you the general human needs. If you cannot find a niche, here are some. Anything that has to do with health is number one, right? Number two, anything that has to do with uh, wealth and money. People always want to know how to make money, how to get out, how to get out of debt, how to save, how to invest. So any, if you have knowledge and expertise about that, then that's a niche. Uh, thirdly, relationships. Everyone wants to have good relationships. So anything about love, notice all the romance books that are out there, right? Anything about love, anything about marriage, anything about parenting, um, anything about even dating, people are looking and buying all of those type of stuff. So that's how you can find another niche. And also spirituality. Even though you might think that the world is, you know, uh, very morally bankrupt, the, the reality still is this, that many people are looking for answer, especially finding their purpose. So spirituality always does good as well. That can be books about uh, faith, about prayer, about worship, anything along those lines. So if you have ideas or expertise, I would say stick to what you know best because you can create better and solve that um, community better because you have affinity. That's why for me, I can speak easy without having to even do a lot of notes because I love spirituality. So it, those topics, anything that has to do with spirituality, faith, I can speak on it easily. And I can write on it easily because it's my thing. But if you want me to write about um, diabetes, well, you know, I might be able to do something, but I'm going to have to spend a lot of time researching and, and so forth. So I would rather you focus on your gifts and talents and serve that community. You know what I'm saying? So I like health, but I'm only, I only like lifestyle stuff that has to do with health. But I, I can't deal with blood and all the intricacies about health. It doesn't interest me. But anything that has to do with health in the sense of, like I say, human performance and behavior, that's kind of my, my thing there. So, okay. Barbara made a good point. Look ahead and plan. Right, exactly. That's always, always plan in advance. Always plan in advance. Okay. Uh, Leroy, if you want more, you can go to my website. I think if you go on there and then pretend like you are leaving, there, there will be a pop-up and it will it will give you an infographic. On that infographic, I actually list um, 
all the niches out there that or industries out there where people are, have been known to make money and those four i already gave you right? like i said health uh, finances or business uh, relationships and uh, spirituality but there are three others um, on that infographic as well and then it will tell you even the skills and what degrees uh, that you should get if you are into academics it tells you what are some of the best degrees to get right now uh, that are both cost effective even what schools to go to that uh, that wouldn't cost you an arm and a leg so you can check that out okay yes look ahead and plan and um yes all of that is good okay so that's it our presentation is finished if you would like to stay i want to share with you an opportunity to be an ambassador or get the word out there. This is a, an idea, a vision that God has given to me. Um, one of the things is many of you know that we create a lot of materials, right? Um, I have already uh, ideas for even 12 more books. So we publish audio books, we publish regular books, we publish courses. I want to create uh, resources for people of faith in particular, faith-based people in particular, who can be able to have success from a biblical perspective that is balanced. But it's not only just telling you about, you know, only, you know, one, one, one side. It's just saying, in your relationship, here are the tools, but you wouldn't have to worry that they're gonna be new agey or this like that or, or off tangent and those type of things. But I really feel that right now, God's people, we are not living up to our full potentials. And it is time for us to live up to our full potentials. So what we are trying to do now is create a community of supporters where you help us to create these materials with a monthly um, donations. And then we are able to create them faster. Because like I said, for me, outside of uh, my, 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 my employment, what I do is I use my entrepreneurial skills to create these things. But they have, of course, they cost, right? Each book technically at the low end will cost you about a thousand dollars, right? And then two and then more. Then the audio book is pretty much about the same. So that's on the low end we're talking about. If you want to get it more fancy and you add in marketing, then it's going to be more. So I've already published 12 books. I've created now, I think, four, three or four audio programs, and then about four or five, it's going to be five soon, online courses we want to create more we have a system and a team of people who can create them fast but because of again economics because we're carrying all the load we want to be able to create them faster so if we have a base team of people who can help with that then it will allow us and my folks to be able to now create these things like clockwork for example last quarter right the last quarter of 2019 we we're able to create five books in just one quarter so imagine if we had the, the support that we need, we can be able to create way more than that. Another reason for that is because there's people overseas that we want to bless, but we cannot bless all of them the way we need to because obviously it costs. So what we would like to do is be able to provide free or very, very cheap resources for them over there. For example, right now we have a, a, a group of people that we've been working with in Pakistan. But it's over a thousand of, um, of them right now that need resources. We have a group of pastors in Kenya, 60 of them, who are studying online, but they also need resources. I've already sent them um, last quarter also. I you know, paid out of it, my pocket. Then I also had a brother uh, from the church who had donated about $300. And so we bought about $300 worth of our resources and was able to help them to get materials. So if we can get um, you to see if this vision might be something that you want to participate in or share it with others, okay? I'm gonna give you the website link. It's strategicsecrets.com slash ambassadors, or there's a, a video here that you will watch, you know, and check it out. And again, this is not something that you have to do. It is something that I want you to do only if you believe it is something that is God inspired and that you can get behind. So I'm gonna give you the link so you can go and check out the page, pray about it. If not, here's what I'm asking you at a minimum. If it's not for you, share it with others because it might be for them. So as you see, most of the things, I keep these things to myself, but 
right now god has shown me that if you want to reach more people and if you want to grow this you cannot keep doing it solo you have to now invite other people to be part of my vision so that's really the instruction that i got from him and so i want to be obedient to it so let me show you a video real quick and for those of you who want to to go i'm going to put the link on there and you can check it out okay so enjoy this video and may god bless you hi family and friends this is chance and i want to take a moment just to share with you a bold vision that god has given to me now many of you know my life i spent my life in service blessing people as much as i can i spent seven years in the united states navy once i got out of the navy i also spent another seven years in humanitarian working with nonprofit organizations i've had the privilege now and the blessing of being able to travel to over 26 different countries all throughout the world but primarily in africa in places such as zimbabwe zambia madagascar liberia mozambique ghana kenya tanzania and so forth this has opened my eyes to a certain reality that today god's people are truly not living up to their potential so god has laid on my heart to be able to create products, programs, and services that help his people to become the best in every area of their life. That means spiritual, physical, emotional, mental, psychological, financial, and we are talking also about your social relational life, your career. We want you as a professional, as an entrepreneur, as a ministry leader, or as a success-minded individual to have the tools and resources you need to fulfill your God-given destiny. Listen, there's a scripture that says that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. It's not because knowledge is not available, but people are tapping into the wrong knowledge. If you're going to faithfully serve God and you're going to be a blessing to humanity you need divine wisdom and that is why God has put on my heart to create products for professionals like yourself some of these tools that we've produced over the years include for example strategic secrets right here we have these books in hardcover and soft cover right these books help people again with the strategies that they need to be able to achieve true greatness not just success but true greatness in each area of their life also we have created again wonderful quality books monetize your skills hardcover soft cover and we have an online course as well where we teach people how to take their god-given gifts their education expertise experiences to be able to leverage them using the power of technology to deliver products program and services online so that you can be able to make a lasting impact, fund your dreams, and sustain your God-given mission, message, or cause. That's the kind of stuff that God has allowed us to create. But we're not finished yet. We also create books on prayer. Prayer That Move Heaven is both a, uh, it's a book and it's an online course that people can take. With this book, we teach you how to get your prayers answered and how to truly move the arms that move the world. Not only that, but we also have other resources. Again, we try to impact your different areas of your life. But again, we know that spiritual is the main foundation. So here are two wonderful books here, right? Am I a real Christian that gives you secrets again of living a victorious Christian life? We give you secrets, seven of them, of how you can overcome and be victorious in that spiritual area. How to claim God's promises for your life, for your health, for your family, your resources, all of that. This is a nice little book but it's power packed okay and because we love that word power pack we've also created power pack spiritual affirmation this is the men's version and this is the woman version now we know that whatever you do every day the way you start your day generally determines how you will end your day or the level of success that you will have each day so this book really helps people to be able to start their day off right with power pack spiritual affirmation and as subtitle says 21 quick and powerful declaration to supercharge your mind and body for daily success. We also create a professional audio book that goes along with this. People can have it as a CD or they can also have, of course, now nowadays everything is streamed, but it's also a downloadable audio book as well.
So all of these, not only that, but we have another book here, Companion, both an audio and a physical book, which is called Win Now, the number one secret ingredient to instant success in every area of your life. And here we also have the audio that goes along with it, both as a CD and also as an audio book download that people can listen to as well. So as you can see, we want you to partner in this vision. God is asking me to receive the blessing of 1,000 faithful, committed monthly supporters to help us create more products and programs at a faster rate. Stuff is moving so quickly, and God's people cannot wait for years and years for material to come out. So we've now created a book, for example, in one day, in a couple of days, right? a couple of hours even. We have a system and a process and God has always given us these visions and ideas of what to create. Right now we have 12 different products that are ready to be worked on and to bring to life but we need your help. We can't do it all by ourselves. We need you to support us to bring these things to life because you will be able to benefit as well. We're not just asking you to be an ambassador and then you receive nothing. No. Every month you receive training programs. Every book that we create, you'll be able to get it without having to purchase it because you are a subscriber. Not only that, but we also create courses. And for those of you, if you have a business, if you have a practice or a ministry, a nonprofit organization, you can select the higher levels of ambassadorship where we now help you to market your business your ministry and so forth using current practices of digital online marketing already and not only that but many of you can also be able to receive every product that we create from now onward into the future meaning you would never have to purchase a book a course or anything from that every product program or service that we create in the future going forward you get complimentary access as long as you're subscribed listen People have Netflix subscription, they have a subscription for all kind of media outlet out there that are not necessarily helping them. Of course, entertainment is okay, but we want more than entertainment. Entertainment is not making you better. Entertainment is not necessarily going to make you achieve greatness and succeed in every area of your life. These resources will. And I want to be able to help you to receive that. Again, you see we create resources for different areas. We didn't leave out the health either. We help other people to create those things. Here are two wonderful health books that we just created. One is Vegan Bariqua Cookbook. Another is Delicious Caribbean Recipes. So we help you to take charge of your health as well. We also help many of our partners to be able to produce their books and courses like Dr. Cooper and others who have created many different books and products with us. And so we want you to do that. I want to, you to also have the latest product that we created, which is the Vision Journal. And there's another one I'm going to share with you with that. But this really is powerful. Just in the last quarter alone, we were able to bring five brand new products to life. And the Vision Journal is one of them. The Vision Journal helps you to chronicle your dreams, your goals, your visions and ideas that God has given to you so that you can have them when you need them. Journaling changes people's lives. Successful people use journal. I've been using a journal now for over 20 years, not just one, of course, many different journals, but journaling is a principle that if you go back and look at some of the most world famous successful people, they all have stuff. Many of the stuff that we know about history is also because many of the men and women wrote down in their journal what was going on and we have access to that information today. There's another one that we wrote is the devotional, the Make It Plain Devotional Journal. Beautiful hardback. By the way, both of these are hardback. So you see, again, excellent. This is quality. We are not creating no basic stuff. We are creating high-level products, quality products, okay? Well-designed, well-laid out, hardcover, softcover, whatever it may be, we create the best that we can, already. So I want you to have access on there. This journal actually has several principles that you would need to master the word, how to study the word yourself. You don't have to have a theologian or have a doctorate degree and all these different things. We give you right in here. The first several pages in this, it, they're all about how to study the word, how to receive from God, how to memorize the word, all these things. When you get the wisdom of God in you, you can do a whole lot. And that's why he has given me this vision to help many of his children to realize their full potential. But also, 
it's not just about reading it's about writing so because we want you to write okay write the things that you have experienced learned and received during your quiet times that's what we want you to do in this so this is over 360 something pages there's a lot of writing space that so you're not going to change journal every two weeks okay that's how i used to be i got 15 journals right right below me here but i created these because we want you to have a powerful tool to journal what god is doing in your life brothers and sisters my friends my family you know we are not seeking to enrich ourselves we are seeking to enrich god's children we are seeking to create positive resources not negative stuff we are not destroying lives we are creating life and so many people are spending their resources destroying life with the different media that folks consume we want to do the opposite we want to help you as a child of god to realize your full potential to realize your dream will you become an ambassador an ambassador is one who faithfully supports us every month there are different levels all you have to do is click on this page, whether it's on the bottom, on the side somewhere, you will see the buttons where you can subscribe and just every single month. You can cancel at any time. There's no pressure here. There's no pressure here. I just want to share with you the vision. That's what God has put on my heart. And he said, listen, I want you to go and share it with others because I want them to be part of it. So we are just looking for 1,000 people to become a monthly subscriber two strategic secrets and you will receive as part of your subscription package again whenever we publish book you get it okay whenever we create a new course you get it we also publish different um, strategic secrets to up leveling different area of your life through our blogs and website and webinars we have coaching programs that are only accessible to people in our community we're not there's some things of course we put on YouTube but most of our stuff is private because that's what we want our supporters to have access to it this is what we call a trifecta blessing you bless um, us by being able to be a giver right so it says when you give you shall receive so we are blessed because we are able to receive the funding the backing that we need to create products and programs swiftly and get them out to the world you are blessed because the giver is always more blessed than the receiver. So you are blessed for giving, but not just because you gave, but you are receiving these same products that other people are receiving, and you are able to now up-level your life. So you're not just giving and then that's it. No, you are receiving from us as well. Then thirdly, the people that you and I can touch can now be multiplied. You can touch thousands of people's lives. We've helped transform so many people's lives because, again, we are creating life-changing, transformational products here. We are helping people. Right now, again, we have folks waiting for some of this material in Kenya, in Pakistan, and different regions. We want to be able to help them to get it as very cost-effective as possible in their native countries or free of charge. But we know that we have expenses to create them. But we don't want to put that burden on those who are overseas, especially who don't have the means and the resources to do that. So think about it. If we are able to, in one year now, to get 100,000 books in a new country or 100,000 students taking our courses overseas, it's possible. I'm beseeching you, in your heart, ask God what he would want you to do. Do a level. Don't settle for just watching this video and doing nothing. I want you to do something. Go ahead and pick a level and help us to create resources, books, courses, training programs, webinars, all these different things, workshops that we're going to be doing, even different merchandise. Like here we have some t-shirts that we create as well, right? This is when we have our Monetize Your Skills conference, right? We do live events as well. We do live publishing workshop where we teach God's people how to create and write their own books and different things like that. And as you can see here, nice shirts. We want to create as many things as possible with positive message, positive inspiration, so that God's people will not be destroyed for lack of knowledge. The time is late. The hour is late. It is time for God's people to rise up and be the best in every single area of their life. How about it? That's all I can share with you right now. You can be part of something bigger than yourself. Be part of this vision and touch lives in every corner of the world. Help us to create more products programs and services that are a blessing to humanity and God will richly reward you. Thank you so much.